in the city. Yes. We are blessed in the field. Yes. We are blessed when we come. Yes. And when we go. Amen. Hallelujah. How many know the devil is defeated? Oh yes. How many really know the devil yes. is defeated? Yes. Hallelujah. If you know the devil is defeated, shout hallelujah. Hallelujah.
It's all in how you handle it. Mm. It's all in how you handle it. And if you want to put for a subtext, you can simply say this. God has it all worked out. Amen. Amen. It's all in how you handle it. God has it all worked out. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord. Father, I stand once again in the course of my service in the body of Christ. Lord, I ask right now, Lord, that you can cause me to totally decrease, that your gifting and your anointing in me may increase. Lord, that I may do no harm to that which becomes sound doctrine and truth. That, Lord, may the words of my mouth and the meditations of my heart be acceptable in your sight. You who are my strength and my redeemer. May those of the sound of my voice, Lord, only hear and see what the Spirit is saying to the church. That the church may be edified, our enemies may be terrified, and you may be glorified in and through us. I ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. And amen. amen. It's all in how you handle it. God already has it worked out. As I said, I was, of all the years that I've served God in ministry, this is one of the few times that I had to really ponder what the Holy Spirit was saying apart from the word as to a thought that would be ministered to those under the sound of my voice on today. So I ask you to pray for me. Amen. As we look into this portion of scripture, I'm reminded that whenever I'm dealing with a particular problem or whenever something arises in my life personally that I have to deal with that seems uh, overwhelming or seems a point or a situation that I cannot readily resolve, I run to First Peter. You know how it is as a child when you were growing up or even as you get younger or get older. When things happen in your life, you tend to run to that place of comfort or safety. Uh, for most people, it has always been mom. Amen. When we are delusioned, when we are discouraged, when we are hurt, when we are emotionally challenged, we run to the place where we find that place of comfort and encouragement. Amen? Amen. And many times, as I said, in the natural, we tend to run to mom. Sometimes we may run to daddy, depends, depending on our relationship with them also. So whenever I'm faced with a dilemma in my life, whenever I'm really pondering or come to the place where decisions have to be made, I tend to run to the Word of God, but in particular to the book of Peter, First and Second Peter. For the first uh, book of Peter, the epistle of Peter uh, to the church, which is one of the general epistles, amen, to the church, has to deal with our suffering. Jesus tells us that in the latter time, trials and tribulations will come. I will be insulting your intelligence today to tell you that we are still in troubling times. Amen. We are in times that I have not experienced in the time of my journey upon the earth. Amen. Here I am. Amen. Three score and eight years later. Amen. I find myself in situations that I have never encountered and the length of my life. Somebody ought to say amen. 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 Now, I know that may seem strange to our younger uh, disciples, our younger believers, because when you are young, those things are contemporary with what you have to endure right now. Amen. I remember growing up and, and laughing sometimes and mocking uh, many times what the older people would say. And many of us have heard this particular statement. Don't laugh. If you live long enough, you will see Amen. what I mean. Amen. Amen. And I Amen. live long enough by the grace of God to understand many times why those older people sometimes will just cry out to the Lord. 
Jesus. Why many times tears would come from their eyes when I would see nothing around them? Why sometimes they'd be standing alone and mumbling a prayer to God, and even though you could not discern or understand what they were saying, they were praying in the spirit that the Lord would move on their behalf in their situation. The Apostle Peter, in writing to the church, especially in this first epistle, wants to encourage the believers, wants to encourage the church concerning the times in which they live. They are living in a time of persecution, a time of untold suffering, amen, because of their relationship with Christ. You must understand that the mind of Christ that dwells in you, when times and situations come upon you, you do not respond or you do not react to those things as you did in the past. And many times it creates a dilemma in your life. There were times when as believers and unbelievers, uh, excuse me, as an unbeliever, that when problems came your way, you handled them a certain way. Amen. You handled them in a certain form. You did certain things, amen, to bring peace unto yourself or to let someone know that what you were experiencing, you were not going to put up with it anymore. Amen. Many times it may have uh, exemplified itself in a fight. Many times it may have exemplified itself in going out and getting drunk. Many, many times it may have exemplified itself in going out and doing drugs or some other thing that God desired that we not do. But we handled it in a different way. Amen. But the Apostle Peter wants to remind us as believers that many times we're praying that these things that we're going through, oh, that they would disappear. Oh, that they would just go away. Oh, that we didn't have to deal with them anymore. But as he writes to the church, he tells them there in verse 12 of chapter 4. He says, my dear friend, beloved, think it not strange concerning what you're going through right now. Amen. You did not bring it upon yourself. You did not know it was coming. But you better understand one thing. As long as you live in this earth, you're going to go through some things. And sometimes it's going to be things that you're going to wonder if it's ever going to be over. I don't know about you, but we won't go ahead, be in, in this pandemic uh, a little less than two years. And I don't know about you, but I'm sick and tired of it. Go ahead, Pastor. Amen. French. And 
uh, I did very well. Believe it or not, I did very well in class. Amen. Wondering the whole while why we were studying this foreign language. No one in our community spoke French. Amen. No one in my family spoke French. But because it was a plan and because it was a cur I was encouraged to take it to help, amen, to build up my learning and understanding, should I ever come to the point where I need it. I graduated from high school, never having to encounter someone who spoke French. I went into the military, never once met anyone who spoke French. After I was discharged from the military, I moved then to Dallas, Texas. And in the course of finding a job and, and just going about life, uh, everyday things of a young person there in Dallas, I happened to work at a service station. And part of our responsibility at that service station was many times individuals would call us Amen, because Dallas was a large city and, and, and many times individuals would, would go into situations they would need help from someone at the service station. So one day this call came in that said there was a lady in distress that needed a, a few gallons of gas just to get to the service station. She was a regular customer. I never met her before, had never encountered her before. And so when I got into the service vehicle and drove the distance to take the gasoline, as I got there, uh, there was also a record driver there. There was a driver of a record. And I could see uh, him conversing uh, with this uh, probably middle-aged lady. And as I got there, he, he came to me and he said, I really don't understand what she's saying. She's trying to say something to me, but I don't understand what she's saying. It's in a language that I do not understand. And as I went to her, and she began to speak to me, here it was, three years after I had graduated from high school. Here it was, in Dallas, Texas, far away from the classroom there at the Robinsonville, where I had made my A's and my B's in my language study. Three years after growing up and now I'm on my own and I'm in a job situation where everyone around me uh, speaks either English or Spanish. And I confront this young, this, this uh, lady and I began to ask her what the problem and out of nowhere she begins to speak French. <laughs> And I had not used my French in those three years. But all of a sudden, I could understand portions of what she was saying. And so in the French that I knew, I began to communicate with her. And all of a sudden, this lady got excited. Amen. It was though somebody finally understood what she was saying. After everything was resolved and I explained to her that I only knew a little French, she was able to uh, communicate to me in that which she com comprehended that I understood. And after her problem was resolved, and then she was ready to get on her way, she turned to me and gave me a $20 tip. Amen. Yeah. What are you trying to say, preacher? What are you trying to say? Say, don't be... Don't be so stressed out. Amen. Don't be even stressed out about what you are going through right now. Amen. It's only a test for what's going to come later. Thank you, Lord. Yeah. No test is given on the day that you get the information. You have time to ponder it and consider it so that when the time of testing comes, you will be prepared. I thank God that even though I thank do not you, understand why I was spending my time in that classroom, amen, getting that language, that one day the opportunity would arise for me to use. Amen. The Apostle Peter wants you to understand <laughs> that, that, that you've got to handle things a certain way. Amen. It, it makes a difference in how we handle situations in our life. I'm not here to tell you that every situation in my life that I've handled has been something that has set up 
on God's podium of excellence, there have been times when I have failed miserably in what I have handled. Amen. But how many know many times when you fail, it's the greatest part of your teaching that will benefit Amen. you. Amen. We really rarely learn anything with everything going on right. But when times start to break down, when trouble comes in our life, I guarantee you, you learn from that situation. Amen. Amen. But you got to know how to handle mm. what you're dealing with. Amen. He says, don't count it strange. As though some strange thing it has come upon you, it's there to try you. It's there to test you. It's there to let you know really where you are. But God already taking care of you. Thank you, Lord. He says, you. but rejoice. Rejoice. Wait a minute. You mean to tell me that we're in the midst of this ongoing situation in our world? Not only in our world, we're in the midst of a, a, speed, a spirit and a season of confusion in our nation. Things that we thought uh, had been defeated years ago, all of a sudden racism and bigotry and hatred and malice and classism uh, and all of these things are rising up again. Yes, they are. Because evil has always been present in God's word. Amen. When Satan was cast down, his only purpose for being here was to kill, to steal, and to destroy. Amen. And when he kills, he steals and destroys. It brings sadness, it brings sorrow into the life of people. My God. But you got to learn how to handle it. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. There was an old saying one time that when the situation becomes so repetitious, when it becomes so tired, you got to learn how to be sick and tired of being sick and tired. Amen. Amen. You gotta learn how, how to develop in you something that is stronger than what you're going through. Jesus said, Amen, in the Gospel of St. John, Amen, that greater is he that is in us yes, than he that is in this Amen. world. But too many times our mind is focused on what's going on around this world. Sometimes we get upset about things without really looking If you name the name of Jesus, if the Spirit of the Lord worked in 
See, some of us think the end is the journey. But all of us are in a journey. He goes on, the, the Apostle Paul there, in chapter 4 of Philippians, he says, Rejoice in the Lord always, and again I say rejoice. See this repeated thing? That we ought to have some joy in our life. Amen. There ought to be something, amen, in our walk with the Lord. That yes, even when we're going through something, amen, I've been in and out of hospital numerous times. But amen. you know the joy of the Lord was with me? The peace of amen. God was with amen. me?
I said, it depends on who you complain to. Oh, y'all don't hear me. Y'all don't hear me. Amen. Amen. The word says, let your request be known unto God. That's right. That's right. See, you can complain to people, <laughs> and people are just like you. They got problems. That's too. right. Amen. 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 That's how I come many times the biggest problem we got is inside of us. Amen. We have these things working in us that we're already upset about. We're already trying to figure out life based on trying to impress or trying to identify with this world. But Jesus said his people are not of this world. You're in this world, but not of That's this right. world. So when you have a complaint, and I always tell you, you just got to know who to complain That's to. That's right. I go to the Lord with my request. I go to the Lord with my problem. Amen. Because the Lord is the only one that can handle all of our problems. That's right. Am I right about That's it? That's right. He said there in Philippi to the church at Philippi, he said, and the peace of God, the peace of God, I don't know about you, but at, at my point in life right now, I pray for peace. Amen. I just want peace in my life. No, I'm not worried about being rich. I'm not worried about being famous. I'm not trying to get any taller. I'm not trying to get any slimmer. Amen. I'm not trying to get any better looking because I can't get any worse looking. But <laughs> God can't be. Amen. But I just want peace with God. Amen. I don't want to spend time arguing with people. Go ahead, Pastor. Amen. Go ahead. Hallelujah. I don't want to spend my whole day in a battle. Amen. Go of ahead. opinions. Right. I want peace with God. He says, which passes all understanding. That's right. When you got peace with God, it says it passes all understanding. You know how you got peace with God? Everything is going on around you. They look at people will look at you when you're sitting there quietly, when you're going about your business, and you got a smile on your face. You'll be out there and you'll think of just the joy and just the, the goodness of God, and all of a sudden a smile will break on your face. Amen. They'll look at you like you're crazy. That's the peace of God because they don't understand why you can be like you are when everything around them is falling apart. I thank God. I've learned how to let everything around me fall apart because the greater one in me won't let me fall apart. Amen. Amen. I ain't got time for breaking down and boo-hooing anymore. That's right. I ain't got time for worrying about I'm going to live up to your expectations. As long as I walk yes. with the Lord, as long as I'm right in yes. I know I'm going to stay along the way. I know yes. I'm still in this flesh and blood. But the Lord knows how to pray. Yes, hallelujah. He says if you're going to think on anything, think on those things that are loved. Think on those things. Thank you, Lord. Beautiful. Hallelujah. Think on those things that are beautiful. Thank you, Lord. Think on those things that are the good before. Yes. Amen. Everyone knows I recently got on Facebook. And, I, and, I'm, and I'm navigating my way through Facebook. And sometimes because I befriended some people, you'll pick up what their friends put on Facebook. And I was looking for a way. I didn't want to lose them as a friend. Amen. So, so I, I, I started uh, learning, understanding the powerful thing. And there was a little, there's a little dots up in the right hand side. <laughs> and those little dots, when you hit them, it'll give you a, a scroll down, and it said, "Hide this post." That's right. And that's what I do. I hide this post. That's right. I learned when that's a right. devil that's right. Go ahead, Pastor. Defeated my That's life. right. I hide that Go ahead.
said, they might say something, but that's why you got true friends. Mm -hmm. You don't even have to defend yourself. Amen. That's right. When you got a true friend, amen, they'll come up and defend you. Amen. See, that's why when the devil goes before the Lord trying to accuse us, Jesus stands up. That's right. And says, wait a minute. Don't you see my blood on them? That's right. Don't you see I died for them? That's right. And because you know that Jesus is an intercessor and a mediator between you and God, you ought to know how to handle it down here. When the devil comes your way, you say, in the name of Jesus, Amen. the Lord rebuke you, devil. That's right. what you're That's trying right. to bring in the midst of my family. Rebuke what you're trying to do in the midst of my church. Rebuke what yeah. you're trying to do in the midst of our nation. Hallelujah. My God. You got to learn how to hold your peace. Thank you, Lord. And let God fight your back. Thank you, Father. Makes life a whole lot more joyful. Oh, yes. When you let God fight your back. Thank you, Father. Someone cut me off in traffic the other day. And when they cut me off, they had the nerve to reach out the window and throw me to see. Huh? Say that. Mm. Mm. Now, to keep them, Lord. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, because the Bible says, don't wish evil on anything. Okay. Yeah. I could have got all upset, and that person mm -hmm. I tried to cut off could have been an accident, and That's I might right. have got That's hurt. right. Amen. Amen. Says, and the peace of God, which passes to all understand, shall keep your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. Amen. Look here. You got to know how to handle it. That's right. You got to know how to handle when your situation, the storm, has a storm in anybody's house. Yes. There's a storm rolling in anybody's house. Yes. Yes. You got to know how to handle your storm. Amen. You can't stop the storm, but you got to know there's shelter from the storm. That's right. Hallelujah. Amen. Oh, come. Yes. You right. got to know where you're hiding. Amen. Right? You got to know where you're covering. Amen. You You gotta know how to handle it. He said, the peace of God will keep your heart and your mind. It will keep your thinking straight. It will keep your emotions in check. Amen. You know how many people are in prison today because they couldn't keep their heart and their mind in check? Their emotions got the best of them. And they didn't think with their mind. And before you know it, they did something that cost them life in prison. Because instead of stepping back and saying, wait a minute, that ain't going to bother me. You ain't done nothing to me. And just moving on. He said, the apostle Paul said, how? That I handle what I'm going through. See, we read the Bible. We study the Bible. But then we want to pull out the Bible the parts that fit where we are to justify Amen. what we need to do. No, you got to take out your whole counsel of God. Paul says, find your brother. Whatever things are true. Whatever things are honest. Whatever things are just. If it's going to be fair for that person, it's going to be fair for that person. Amen. That's right. What the old people you say, what good for the man is good for the goose. That's right. If it's going right. to be right on the right hand, it'll be right on the That's left. right. Yes. Somebody ought to say amen. 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 Say, whatsoever things are pure, whatsoever things are lovely, when you start looking, stop looking at the bad all the time. Amen. I know that we're in the midst of a pandemic, but Lord, when I get home and I see that my family, amen, is safe, and I see that my family is, is taken care of, and I see that I never see the righteous forsaken, my grandkids when they're there, they got food, my wife is doing well, I just have to say thank you, Lord. Yes. 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 Well, things are of a good report. If there be any goodness, as what virtue is, if there be any goodness in this, <laughs> it 
said to there be any praise. Think on this. Isn't it sad? We can leave church, and this has been a custom of a church for so long. We'll be in church on Sunday morning, everything ain't seemed to be all right. Amen. But I learned there'll be people sitting up in the church. Man! Sitting up in the church, mm-hmm. cussing somebody out in their mind. My oh, yes. <laughs> Profanity all up in their mind. They ain't uttered it out yet, but it's in there. Mm-hmm. Can't give them to praise the Lord. They just sit there mad, ready to get even with somebody. They'll leave the church worse than when they got there. My goodness. He says, if there be any goodness, Think on these things. That's right. Those things which you have both heard and received and seen in me do, and the God of peace shall be with you. Why? Because Paul was someone who understood suffering. Right. He understood going through. Why? Why? Why do we have to know how to handle it? We're in the last day. That's right. He says back in Peter, First Peter chapter 4, the apostle Peter said, If you be reproached for the name of Christ, be happy. If things come against you because you're saved, start to be happy. Amen. If folks make fun of you because you're saved, be happy. Amen. If they talk about you because you don't do the things the world does, be happy. Amen. Because he said, if you're happy, said, for the spirit of glory. Do you understand what the spirit of glory is? You know what they're upset about? There's a spirit of greatness upon you. There's a spirit of overcoming upon you. There's a spirit of perseverance upon you. Because you know what they want to do? They want to draw you into their ungodliness. They want to bring you into the mess that they're in. Because the Spirit of God in you, the Holy Spirit convicts them of what they're in the midst of. I've been there. I've been there. Amen. You know, it's amazing. We don't got away from testifying how God brought us out. Amen. I remember when I first joined the church. I joined the church. You can join the church and not be saved. That's right. That's right. And I got involved with all of the church activities and everything. But I hadn't let the world go. You know how the Lord was dealing with me. I hadn't let it go. I'm telling you, my pastor. That's a little bit bigger. I wasn't pastor then. I wasn't. Brother, I wasn't I was just church I love my people. <laughs> but I want to hide when I went to church. The fact that I drank beer. What I would do, I kept me in the big bag of pepper. When I would go to choir rehearsal, I get up there with the rest of the brothers and just sing. There were times I didn't. Drink my beer. I'm going out with sin. Y'all let it pass the spring. <laughs> you know, folks do that right now. Mm-hmm. Some, of the, some, of the, some of the most powerful people that you see with the gifting in the church, don't, don't, don't be fooled. That's right. And so I went up there one Saturday, we had our, our male choir we rehearsing. And before I went to rehearsal, I decided, you know, how am I going to drink me a few beers? I'm in church. I'm right with everybody. I'm, I'm, I'm in the building. Yeah. That's what they told me. Join the church. Join the church. Everything will be all right. <laughs> Never say one thing about getting saved. Just join the church. Mm-hmm. So, so I drank my beer, popped my peppermints. Now I went there and how many know alcohol has a spirit of its own too? Drugs have a spirit of their own. That's right. And I was up there and I was just singing away. That I all was working in. I was just singing away. Y'all get past the time, Jessica. 
<laughs> and so, I figured my peppermint had everybody food. So when, when we came out of rehearsal and walking, and one of the members of the choir said, you know, Brother Lynch is really in the spirit today. And the old deacon said, yeah, he was in the spirit, but wasn't the Holy Spirit. <laughs> God uncovered that thing. Mm -hmm. See, y'all looking at me like, mm -hmm. like strange. But do you know how many people are hypocritical? That's church? right. That's right. Mm -hmm. Go ahead and tell it. How many people come to church just for the fellowship? That's right. Just for That's the right. Together, That's it. But the lines are lined That's up it. with the Spirit of God. That's it. Hallelujah. He said, when you're uh, uh, picked on, when you're singled out, when you're made fun of, when you're mocked for the name of Christ, be happy for the spirit of glory and of God rests upon you. And on that part, he spoke an evil of. They talk about the church. They make fun of the church. Amen. When you look at news today, the first thing they want to bring out is the fact that somebody goes to church. He was a religious person. You can be religious and go to hell. That's it. But you can't be saved and go to hell. You can be religious and smile at everyone in the fellowship on Sunday. I remember when I was young, I used to see these older men that would sit beside their wives in the church on Sunday and look just like somebody at punk, punk. Sour lemons in their face. But as soon as they got up around the other sisters, they show all that to you. What was the difference between the one you were sitting with and the one you were talking to? You. Sad. But on your part, God is glorified. It says, but let, let none of you suffer as a murderer or as a thief, or as an evildoer, or a busybody. Look at what Peter said. He goes from being a murderer, a thief, or some other evildoer, said don't even be a busybody. Always in other folks' business. Go ahead. Always meddling about other folks. You can tell what's going on in other folks' Go ahead, Pastor. Always trying to tell me, yeah, I've been watching my name. Why are you looking so hard at somebody else's house? Go ahead. <laughs> you worry about what's going on in somebody else's life. Be concerned about what's going That's on it. in your own life. Amen. Amen. Sin. Yet if any man suffer as a Christian, don't be ashamed. I thank God that he brought me to the point and continues to grace me Amen. to Amen. Amen. I once made a statement that seemed like I had more friends when I was unsaved than when I'm saved. But the Holy Spirit teaches you they really weren't your friends. Mm -hmm. They were only there for what they could get out of you. Amen. And as long as they could get what they could get out of you, they would call you friends. Amen. Yeah. And so if you suffer sometimes with them not showing up at your house, you haven't lost anything. That's right. Amen. So don't be ashamed, but let him glorify God on this day. He says, you know what you got to do this? You got to know what you got to do know how to handle this plan that we're in. You got to know how to handle walking in this pandemic. You got to know how to handle walking in this time of social unrest. You got to know how to handle this time of tensions internationally. When different leaders of the world now are opposing one another, can't talk with one another, talking bad about one another, uh, threatening one another what they're going to do. That's right. Because the time is coming. Amen. The judge Judgment is coming Amen. to God's creation. Amen. 
God is bringing about some judgment. Now, y'all know that right. with me because I wanted to know, uh, you know, we always use the word judgment and we always think of, of it being, you know, uh, knowing what's right and what's wrong. But I looked into the dictionary. Study to show yourself approved. And the dictionary, in Marion uh, 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 Dictionary, it says, judgment is the process of forming an opinion or evaluation by discerning and comparing. What do you compare? You look at that which you know is right. And then you're able to make a decision on what you're dealing with. Y'all with me? Amen. If you don't know what's right, you can't make a righteous judgment. That's right. See, if you've been looking at what's wrong all the time, the judgment you make is going to be wrong. That's right. If you're only looking at it from one side and not comparing right. to what's really going on, you're still going to make a bad That's judgment. Right. Said or judgment is an opinion or estimate so formed. In other words, you make a decision based on what you think is right. Do you really know what's right? That's right. It's like going <laughs> into Burlington. Y'all know Burlington is. Mm -hmm. And you see a price on something. And you go up to the counter and you say, this price isn't right. And the salesperson said, what do you think so? Because I don't think it's worth this much. Mm -hmm. Well, your judgment is no good because that's the price they're asking for that item. That's right. That's right. Amen? Amen. And that price is set by those who are in authority. That's right. Who own the business. Right. You know what they say? If you don't want to pay this price, put it down and go out. That's right. Come on now. Go ahead. Go ahead. Judgment is also having the capacity to judge. That's right. You got to be able to have something already in you in order to make a That's judgment. That's right. Jesus says in Matthew chapter five, uh, chapter seven, "Judge not, that you be not judged." Whatever measure you use to judge with. You're going to be judged with the same. People were saying, well, that's you, that he made that statement so that you wouldn't be judging folks. No, he said judge with the same measure that you're going to be judged with. Whatever capacity you're judging with, make sure when you're judged with it that you meet the standard also. Because every day, <coughs> we got to make a judgment. That's right. If you drive on the highway, you got to make a judgment. That's right. Should I stay in this lane? Should I get in that lane? Better those of us who fly out there. Amen. Yeah. That's true. <laughs> got that pedal to that pedal. <laughs> uh, 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 is this a slow lane or is this a slow lane? That's right. Y'all look at me, but y'all know I'm right. That's right. That's right. I'm good about it. Amen. Amen. I can't keep up with you for nothing. <laughs> 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 Amen. I'm trying, to, I'm trying to hold the speed limit, but we go in the same place, and I'm going to get there when you get there, so next thing you know, I'm making a bad judgment decision. I'm speeding up to Amen. I want to back up what they're saying. When you go to the court, and the judge hits that gown and says, 20 years in prison. And you're up there in that orange suit with the handcuffs on, and you say, no, nah, judge, it's only about five. The judge doesn't have to say another word. That's right. Because he's the one in authority. This world doesn't understand. We've got a judge who sits in authority. He sits on high. And everything that we do in life, he's already taking a record of it. 
again in the house of God. That's right. God allowed this pandemic to come. He could have stopped it when the first whatever that is uh, that, that uh, works the virus began to start. You, you remember the song they used to uh, sing in the church? They say he kept us from danger, seen and unseen. That's right. There's some stuff in the air that the Lord just didn't let come your way. That's right. Home. That's right. There's some stuff that could have Thank happened you, Lord. to us. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. God before yes. He Thank you, Lord. 
can touch somebody. Thank you, Father. He can touch somebody. Thank you, Father. Amen. And rejoice with them to see their deliverance, to see their salvation. Yes. Amen. To see them come to the family of God. Stand up on your feet. Thank you, Lord. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. You who are the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. You who are the God and Father of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. We come honoring you and thanking you. Thank you, Lord. Lord, for being so merciful and so gracious to us. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord, for yet another day's journey. Yes, God. Lord, when you allowed us to awaken this morning, your words that you gave us new mercy. Thank you, Father. Just for today. Yes. And we are so thankful. Thank you, Lord. Lord, we thank you, Lord, that even as you move by your spirit in the land of today. Thank you, God. Father, I pray that you keep these, my brothers and sisters. Yes, Lord. Whether young or old, even to the infant, Father, keep them, Lord. Yes. Of 
according yes, to the first hour of Thank you, Jesus. Then, Father, I lift up to you, Lord, uh, the entirety of yes. your creation. For your words, the creation itself groans. It groans away the return. Amen. Father Thank you, Lord. Christ. So, Lord, I ask right now that you would bless those right now whose hearts are heavy. Lord, I lift up to you our home on the birth of Williams, Lord. Yes. I ask, Father, that you would give her peace, Lord, that you would give her strength, yes. uh, Lord, in this season. Yes, Lord. I lift up to you her mother, Father. Yes, God. And Lord, she may find peace in her season right now. Yes, God. The Lord, even though we may not understand, Lord, it is your peace. Yes, it is your peace which passes all understanding. Yes, God. Lord, I pray, Lord, for the mother of our mother. Yes. The Lord, your peace will be upon them. Yes, then, God. Then, Father, I pray for this fellowship of believers. Yes, God. Turn around by faith. Yes, God. Yes. Yes. Lord, yes, as we grow in your grace, yes, God. Lord, we will be equipped, Lord, yes, God. to be before we do. Yes, yes Lord, God. We will be filled anew yes, with the Holy Spirit. Yes. Thank you, Jesus. That we might be witnesses unto you. Thank you, Jesus. To those in this world. Thank you, Father. Use us, Lord. Yes. As light and dark. Thank you, Jesus. Use us, Lord. Yes, God. As salt and unseasoned world. Thank you, Jesus. Use us, Lord. Thank you, Lord. As your ambassadors here on earth. Yes, God. Use us, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Both young, both old, Lord. Yes, God. And Lord, to carry forth the gospel of Jesus Christ. Thank you, Jesus. Lord, and may the words of our mouth, Lord, be in rivers of living water. Yes, God. Even as we open our mouth. We will speak life yes, and not death. Thank you, Jesus. Lord, cause these, my brothers and sisters, to prosper in all things, even as their souls Thank prosper. you, Jesus. Lord, to our young adults, Lord, who continue to press toward the mark of the high calling. Yes. Lord, remind us, Lord, yes, that we must walk where they walk, Lord, that we are to lift them up, we are to encourage them, Lord, in the thing. Uh, yes. yes, God. Lord, and I pray for every household of faith, Lord, that assemble on today. Yes, God. Lord, keep us, Lord, from yes. uh, the midst of the enemy that's yes. unseen, Lord. Yes. Lord, continue to yes. give us your help, your strength, Father, yes, in God. this time and season in which we live. Please. And now, oh Lord, as we prepare to leave this place and leave the presence of those who are with us virtually, we ask, Lord, that you not leave us alone, Lord. But we're reminded of your promise that you said you yes. would leave us, Lord, for mm -hmm. Now may the grace of our God, the sweet communion of his Holy Spirit, may he rest, may he move, may he abide, both with us now and forever. Let God redeem. Say amen. Amen. amen.